everyone. This is Kirk Laughlin from Nearshore Americas at the Nearshore News Desk here on the ground in Rio de Janeiro with the tool Vashish. He's the CEO and founder of Neo IT. And the tool, we want to talk a little bit about some of the unique features of the Brazil marketplace and start out with your perception on how you would rank Brazil in terms of enticing investment compared to some of its regional neighbors. So, um, one of the things that's important in outsourcing is scale. And so, the very fact population makes Brazil a contender. And then, on top of that, you start looking at the domestic outsourcing market. And what you start to see is that that capability is actually being developed because Brazil has a domestic outsourcing market, both in ITO and BPO. At the same time, what you're starting to see is there's certain industries that tend to outsource a lot in Brazil. You see the banks, you see telecom, oil and gas, agribusiness. So you're starting to see these companies develop an expertise in domains also. And I think that's exactly what starts to put Brazil on the map as a, as a potential destination. And when you start looking at um, what the government is trying to do, what the government really is trying to do is say that this sector is important to us and we're willing to do certain things. And so for example, this morning at, uh, we heard from one of the ministries talking about reducing the city tax for a certain period of time to encourage business to come here. I don't think it's enough yet. I think if you really want to promote the export of IT and BPO, there's a lot that needs to be done because the surrounding countries have some better incentive than they do. And, and let's let's uh, put that out on the table. Uh, in fact, we talked about Colombia. Tell us a little bit about if you just did an apples and apples uh, comparison with Colombia and Brazil. So you know, so when companies set up captive centers, for example, long term um, stability is really important to them. And what they don't want to see is when the when the next democratic government comes along, you know, certain promises that are made and the laws get changed. What Colombia did is they they put this rule into effect that when you first make an investment, if you make a contribution of one and a half percent tax you basically have a guaranteed legal contract, they call it a stability contract, for 20 years. Which means no, it's a, no government change can impact that contract you have with the government. And so basically it gives you a 20 year view of stability. And of course we, have, we all know the story about exports being tax free in, you know, in many, many, many countries. And I think those are some of the benefits that you do need to have in place. Because the domestic market is so strong in Brazil that if those incentives don't exist, why would you as a service provider want to try and do import. Because at the same time, what you start to see in the last four years, you've seen that the real has appreciated significantly. So your pricing from four years ago to today, you're actually at a loss because you're probably 25% at least different than you were four years ago. Interesting, interesting. One thing we should talk a little bit about is this, this issue of culture, and obviously a, a great compelling feature of doing business in the near shore, yet Frankly, culture, cultural compatibility doesn't solve these issues that often rise up in the relationship with the provider and, and, and seller, or the provider and the buyer. Uh, what do you think fundamentally needs to be improved around the engagement model? Right. So most engagement models in a market like Brazil today are staff organization, which is the client spends a tremendous amount of time interviewing associates with the supplier. The supplier is a huge burden. Maybe one in four or one in five actually gets selected. And I don't think that's helpful. And secondly, you're 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 basically bringing people from the supplier in, and you're leveraging individual capabilities. You're not leveraging the fact that that supplier may have another five financial services clients or another four oil and gas clients. What you're leveraging is those individuals. Also, the, the typically the supplier has no responsibility for SLAs when you have a staff augmentation contract. I think fundamentally the engagement models that have to change is you have to move from staff augmentation to an outcome-based model, where the risk to a large extent is either shared or much more on the supplier side, and more importantly, supplier has the flexibility to decide how to staff it, what kind of resources to put into place. And sometimes what may happen is they may actually have 25% less resources, but higher quality resources, because that's what it takes to make it successful. So give the supplier flexibility and change the risk reward system so there's an incentive to actually make improvements. Interesting. Another thing that's, uh, I told you, you've uh, been very active, I've noticed, in uh, the nearshore countries as of late. Uh, you know, the nearshore concept is, this industry has been evolving quite a bit over the last few years, but is there something special going on right now that you, you think makes it particularly hot? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think, first of all, the uh, Latin economies have recovered extremely well. They've recovered faster than our economy. So I think there's a lot of interest because of that. Um, some of the economies like Colombia, uh, you know, uh, Brazil 
have been have now been stable economies for significant periods of time. And so I think that's that's definitely there. On top of that, the supply curve, if you look at the supply curve, you actually have mature suppliers, and then, I'm not just talking about IBM Accenture doing business here, I'm talking about local companies like Polytech and CPM Praxis and BRQ, all, that, all these companies actually have significant presence now. And once you start looking at Columbia and other locations, what you find is some of these are not just Brazilian companies or Colombian companies, they're actually regional players. And I think that's been noticed by the buy side. On top of that, I think companies have such a scale in Asia that they're starting to realize that I have a concentration risk, number one. And number two, the time zone difference, the distance difference is causing some challenges with certain kind of development, a certain kind of support. And I think what, what that requires is that these companies are looking for time zone compatibility, and time zone compatibility definitely help because there's certain things you can do for complex decision making, complex communication that are required, and if you're culturally similar, it's a lot easier. Great. Well, uh, it's, well, it's always great to see you in Rio, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you soon. My pleasure. Thank Thanks you so sir. much. Thank you.